It's the 23rd of the third 2-4. Max has done once again what you'd expect him to do. Put it on pole. And in other news, is rain still wet? F1 aficionados are fast running out of superlatives for this dude. Ominous, imperious, inevitable. None of which are really apropos. This dude is bending the space-time continuum. Where did they get him from? At this point, it feels like the fella's just breaking records for gusto. 250 kilometers per hour was his average during his hot lap. That's ridiculous. And Brundle commented as much saying you'd be forgiven watching that lap for thinking that at no time did Max ease up off the throttle or even touch the brake? Bending the space-time continuum is what he's doing. And there were those who say that Max looks like he's driving Miss Daisy so easy is that Adrian Newey car to drive. That his ability to tap into performance almost at will is a function of the competence of his designer, of that design philosophy. And that all is true, of course, but excellence, they say, is what you do every day. And these sessions for Max were beset on both sides by travails, difficult, you remember he took too much curb, damaged the floor. And being a chap that likes to steer the car on the nodes, Max Verstappen was wrestling with an unwanted third party. His kryptonite even understeer. And that the three soon to be four time champion puts down a time of 1.59 despite those issues can only be described as one thing. That's clutch. He laid down a 115.9. That's three tenths clear of his closest competition in Checo Perez. Three tenths. And to us mere mortals, three tenths might not sound like much, but in F1 terms, three tenths is a chasm. A wise man once said that the person that beats Max Verstappen isn't even in F1 just yet. And our most recent evidence, how can you even argue? And post quality the three soon to be four-time champion extended his sympathy, expounding on the unfortunate circumstance that Logan Sargent has found himself in. For Stappen stating in no uncertain terms that had Red Bull done that to him, he would have been on the first plane home. Oh. <laughs> and Carlos Sainz's story arc will continue to make headlines because the Spaniard keeps turning sceptics into believers. Lest we forget that Sainz has not long jumped off the operating theatre. No one can tell me that that dude is 100% fit, let alone ready to go in an F1 car with all those Gs. And so for Carlos to lay down a lap so god tier that but for a cheeky wobble at turn 9 he might have put it on pole. Mistake notwithstanding the Spaniard still drops it on the front row. Well that's worthy of praise, no admiration even. Oh and by the way a further two tenths down the road is Carlos Sainz's Monagas teammate, one chap called Charles Leclerc. You know, the same fella that's reminiscent of Gilles Villeneuve, the fastest driver of all in quali trim. So what's the story there, you might ask? How is Carlos able to optimise for his performance, but Charles not? Well, just like Max of late, Carlos Sainz somehow is able to access the upper echelons of his best endeavours. In Q3, say, or the race, when it matters most. With recent form front and centre of the mind, one wonders now how wise the hires up at Ferrari consider their decision to trade one Carlos Sainz Jr. for one Sir Lewis Hamilton. And of course that rears its ugly head as a subject topic because over at the boys and girls from Brackley and Brixworth, all hasn't been well. Because it was only 24 hours ago when Lewis Hamilton was praising the W15, saying that it wasn't the evil sister of the W14, that it was easier to drive, had more potential than that. And for the second race weekend straight in FP3, the W15 flattered to deceive courtesy of a few vanity runs, low fuel settings, only for temp and wind changes to unravel this perceived progress. Because in qualifying, the Mercedes were nowhere to be seen. Lewis was out as soon as Q2, out qualified by his teammate for the fifth race in a row. Oof. This is the first time since 2010 that Lewis has failed to reach Q3 at this fixture. The Brit will start tomorrow's race in P11. Correspondingly, Lewis cut a forlorn figure in the post-quali pen. When asked about his failure to make Q3, the Brit responded with nonchalance. He was laissez-faire. With a shrug of the shoulders, he said it's a flat feeling, but I'm used to it. Who is this? It's not great, he continued, but it could be worse. Non-rhetorical question, how could it be worse? I mean, I'm not dealing with it that great, he continued. George has been outperforming me for the past three races, in fact. Well, allow me to interject, Mr. Hamilton, because this is the fifth time in a row 
that George has out-qualified Lewis. Not that anybody's keeping count. The seven-time champ bookended his interview by saying, I'm just trying to keep my head above water. And Toto only confounds the fears of millions of Mercedes fans all around the world. When pressed on the root causes of the W15's underperformance, Toto responded, it's more complex than just mechanical or aero. That we don't know how to solve for this. That we struggle to get the car in its optimum operating window. I must be in Back to the Future two years back because this is what they were saying then. What are we doing here? And as a Lewis fan, you know what makes this 10,000 times worse? George? Because Russell for the past couple of weeks has been telling anyone that will listen that this car has been designed in Lewis's image, not mine. Case in point, says George, the seat's been moved further back to accommodate Lewis Hamilton. I didn't want that. And so now when Lewis is blaming as root cause of his issues, the car and setup, George is having none of it. Because in George's post-quality interviews, he reiterates what he's been saying on previous race weekends. That as far as I know, me and Lewis are running the same setups. There's nothing much wrong with the car. And this matters. Read between the lines. What's George saying really? George is saying that a bad workman always blames his tools over humanity. Pertaining to the Australian Grand Prix qualifying session, the prosecution rests. No further questions, Your Honour.